Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today is going to be day 20 and 21. We are now three weeks into YB. Time really has been flying by and it doesn't even feel like three weeks, but at the same time, it kind of does. Uh, I don't know really how to explain it. I feel like I've not been in it for a long time, but at the same time, I feel like maybe just because I'm used to school and you know, like how a normal school day goes. Today we're going to be talking about tests, how my first test in IB went and what you can kind of do to prepare. My first test was a math test. It was on equations of a line and radicals and certs. These are two pretty simple topics for an 11th grader like myself, but yeah, I think most of this test was basically just review from last year. That's not to say the test was easy though, it was not. I had a lot of people, basically the entire class had to stay back for extra time and it was quite rough. Lucky for you though, I'm gonna give you some stuff that you would need to know before doing the test to keep you the most prepared possible. Also keep in mind, just because my first test was extremely like, not difficult, but tedious, I guess would be the right word. Uh, doesn't mean yours will be. I had a, the same uh, math SL class, and they did, like, they had, were tested on different things, and their test was a lot easier. So, it just depends on what type of teacher you get, I think, or just whatever units they want to cover. The first thing that you can do to really maximize your chances of doing well in your first test is to review old notes from pre-IB. Most likely what will be on your test is something you've done before. On the first test, unless you're doing like, unless you recognize that what you're doing is something that you've never seen before, you have the old notes to go back on that you spent a lot of time on those units, so why not use them? I know that the subscriptions for the pre-IB textbook does last like quite long and if you like for me for example i don't have a physical textbooks i just have digital ones so having those resources and being able to go over them is something you really should take advantage of in math being able to answer a question fully and in detail is what will give you the most points that kind of is true for every class but for some classes that are more there's no right answer like tok it doesn't really work like that especially when command terms get thrown into play which is something that you need to recognize which leads right into my second tip that you should go over command terms before any test just as a quick review even if you feel like you have them down you should just go over them because the more you ingrain that into your brain the less likely you're going to stress out on an exam or something like that and you're just like oh i forget what this command term means on top of everything else that you have to memorize knowing command terms just make the makes the whole test taking process so much easier my third and final tip will probably be that uh you know your teachers probably let you like at least two or three weeks in advance that's how much i knew like i knew two or three weeks in advance before my test date actually was like when i was going to be tested so coming up with a schedule on what you want to study what you're bad at what you what you're good at what you need to spend less time on is important so that way when the test date does come you feel like you can excel in all aspects of the unit you're being tested on i also encourage you to go out into the internet and look for different methods to do questions if you don't like the way your teacher is teaching it because in math there most of the time there are multiple ways thousands of ways to get to the same answer and sometimes it only takes that one sentence for everything to click in your head i know that's how it was for me in math sometimes like i just need to see one person do it one way and i was like oh that's the way i want to do it because it's just the way i like it and and that's what makes sense to me and that is going to be different for every person that is the one downside of school is that everyone gets taught a certain thing one way and if that one way doesn't fit you then you are kind of you got you can't really do anything else but uh, being able to live in a time where the internet is as powerful and widespread as it is, you should really be taking advantage of that. Online forums, I've talked about this in previous videos, are a great place to get information, not on just IB, but basically any topic that you want because somewhere out there, there's gonna be a group of people who are like fascinated about, I don't know, 
Pythagorean theorem, for example, I know that gets a lot of hate because people talk about, oh, when am I going to use Pyth Pythagorean theorem? And there's a bunch of reels and I'm sure TikToks about like the amount of days I've used Pythagorean theorem. Zero, you know? But yeah, if you want to find an expert on something to learn from them and get a different perspective than what you're getting taught in school, the internet is a great place to find that person. Another thing I'm going to talk about quickly in this video, but uh, my next video in two days will go into deeper depth once I get all of my textbooks, is textbooks. I got my first textbook to... oh, shit. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm just going to cover that just so you can't see my school. But I have the new 2023 edition for biology. Uh, this is... it's a heavy book. Uh, it's made by Oxford. The quality is great. Um, I haven't really had a chance to go through it because I literally just got them today and right after school I had sports practice. So I haven't had a chance to go through it, but I definitely am because my teacher does give us the textbook pages for the topics that we're doing. So I'm really interested to see what I can find in here and kind of how the textbook works. I'm also going to try and find some information on study guides that are also available. Like, you can see on the back of the book, there's like the actual textbook, the course companion, or the Kerboodle course companion. I don't know what that is. I'll find out though for my video. And the study guide, uh, I don't really know. I barely would know what's in the textbook, let alone the study guide, but once I find more information and I get all my textbooks from, I think I only need one from chemistry because I'm not getting a math textbook. But yeah, I'll compile all that information that I find and put it into the next video. This is gonna be kind of ironic considering I've been talking about on my channel how important it is to stay on top of everything, but I'm gonna quickly talk about how my workload is right now. Well, it's not like I'm behind, I'm just not where I want to be because being like on track, I feel like isn't even good enough in IB. You always want to be staying ahead. So that way when you go to class, it's kind of revision, kind of learning new things because sometimes what teachers say in class are different from what they say on the slides. Sometimes they just put like equations or something like that on the slides and what they actually say is kind of the information you want to grasp. But yeah, uh, I think it's just because I'm gonna start, I want to start like trying new um, ways to take notes like and then maybe make that a video for you guys where in one video I do one where I print off the slides and then annotate them. Another note taking method is that in, this is one that I really want to try, is in class I only write down what the teacher says because that's something that I can't really like go back and check. And then after class, I would, or after school or something like that, when I have free time, I would copy down the slides and the information that I want to pick out from that. Maybe take some aspects from one note-taking uh, way and mix them into an, another way and see what works. I feel like that video might also be useful and if that sounds good to you guys, let me know in the comments and I'll try to do that also. Before this, I was actually taking the biology notes that I missed because in biology, I just did like some light like note taking, like I didn't copy every single slide because I was taking that time to uh, deepen my research in digital societies because we had a presentation on space and VR and AR and we're getting to use um, Google Cardboards and soon in the future, my teacher said we could use Oculus Rifts and Oculus Quest, and I think those are gonna be super cute, cool. Um, I've yet to use a Merge Cube. I wanna use the Merge Cube and the 360 camera. Those two things sound super cool to me. Yeah, I'm kind of excited to see where that goes in that class. And next class, I think, or no, that would be Wednesday's class. I'm gonna start getting more information on my IA and digital societies. So yeah, I got a lot of videos coming up. I spent like a lot of time thinking about video ideas because I want every video to give you information that is actually gonna be useful for you. If you guys have any questions, let me know in the comments. I'll most likely see them. I don't check the comments often because I don't have YouTube Studio on my phone. And the only time I'm really on my computer is like past six o'clock or right after practice when I get home. And that's mostly just doing schoolwork. 
So I don't really check, but uh, I think I, uh, I'll just get YouTube Studio on my phone. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.